Study of a Subway Rider. He sat down. Next to him, a small gray man was seated, who was reading the Boston record. He had just started, and there was a method to it. First, he stared at the headline for a few seconds. It read, T-Men Bear Bookie Bonanza. Then he deftly turned the pages to the race charts, his index finger pointing in silent examination at the treasury balance so conveniently, even though illogically, printed in these pages. He then read the charts, once every so often pointing at a spot in one of them and running his finger along a line. After several minutes of this, he swung the pages again. This time it was the comic pages. There he remained for a considerable length of time. Then, leafing his way back through the sports pages, he reached the front of the paper, where on one side were several pictures of leggy and bosomy girls and sundry divorce scandals, juicy murders, and the aforementioned bookie raid. And on the other side, a picture of the archbishop with a story of a speech by that long-winded cleric about the virtues of quote, unquote, our parochial schools. At the next stop, he arose, somewhat flustered, as though upset in his daily routine, when two black-clad nuns entered the car. He raised his hat and offered his seat to one of the pale, bespectacled girls. Walter remained in his seat, thus leaving one of the nuns standing until a matronly woman got up and gave her seat to one of the holy women.' 